Welcome to Life Effects, the channel where I do stuff with effect. Today we create some stones. Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. see, see. It, it looks something like this. Last time we left off after finishing the basic mesh of the island. Today I want to create the stone druid circle in this area. And for this I want to try out a different interface. Instead of using top and bottom split panel, I'm splitting it to left and right. Let's see if it gets easier to navigate this way. So for the stone I create a new geometry and rename it to stone circle. I delete the default file and hide the other geometry. I don't need it at the moment. For the first stone I begin with a box. The stone will be somewhere on the inside of this block. I want the block to be exactly on top of the grid. So I copy the parameter size on the y axis and paste it as a relative reference to the center and divide it by 2. And with that the box stays always on the grid even if I change the size of it. Next I create a sphere which I want to use to carve the basic mesh out of the stone. So I change it to Polygon and increase the frequency. To change some values I create a transform node and I want to scale it a bit in the Y axis. The sphere is smooth at the moment but I want to create uneven shapes for the stones. So I get me a point jitter node scale the effect down until I have something that might give me the look that I want. And now it's time for the new Boolean node. With this node I can let two geometries interact with one another. In this case I want to intersect the block with the sphere. The default setting is already on intersect, which is what I wanted. When I now move the sphere the result changes immediately. Then I can transform the sphere until I get the shape that I want. Here you can see perfectly how the Boolean node combines both geometries. This looks quite good so far, but I want to make a random cut out of the stone. So I get yet another sphere, polygon again and a bit smaller. Push it higher and now I use another boolean node to cut my stone. The default is again intersect but this time I need subtract. The cut is a bit too clean so I get another transform for the shape. and another jitter to make it an uneven cut. Once again I scale down the effect. And now it looks a whole lot more natural. Of course I want the stone to have a lot more points. So I create a subdivide node. And when you increase the depth of this effect you get a lot more points and a mesh with a much higher resolution. At some point I want to smooth the mesh back down but I'm not quite sure if I have to do this before the subdivide or after. I don't like the before version so I try after the subdivide. So I disconnect by wiggling and put the node right back in after the subdivide. Now it's time to get the mesh of the island back in, because now it's about to place the stones at the right positions. And I'm going to do that with a placeholder sphere. And this time I'm going to use a primitive, because I only need one point. And now it's time for a bit of vex. I need some normals for the sphere, 
because I want to rotate the sphere and thereby rotate the stone that will be placed at that point. And with this command I created normals for the x-axis. Now I can create a transform node and place this sphere where I want the first stone to be. I will need a merge sub later on, so I create it right away, so that you can see how it will look with the first stone. And I can show you that with a copy node. I connect the stone and the sphere, and there you have it, the first stone. So in the end I want to have one big stone and four smaller ones right along the circle. So I copy the transform and thereby multiply the sphere. So now that the circle is where it's supposed to be, it's time to give the surface of the stone the appearance of a real stone. And for this I create a point warp. And with this warp I want to create a noise on the surface of the stones. So we start with a turbulent noise. And I want to put the position input data into this noise data and then use this information to displace along the normal. So I feed the noise into the amount of the displace and put that information back into the position data. This looks quite interesting, but it's not what I'm looking for. So I decrease the displacement to a slight negative and then play with the turbulent noise until I have something that fits my need. Now that this is set up, it's time to get the stones randomized. I can do this with different ways. The easiest one would be to change the size of the stone on the y-axis. But for this to work, I have to deliver the copy node a stamp. And I do this by typing the following. Stamp, the name of the copy node, the name of the variable and a default value. Now I can go down to my copy node, activate stamp inputs and use this variable to feed this information into my copies. Once again I put a fit in front, then a random number based on the point number plus some random value and say those values have to be between negative 0.3 and 0.3. The effect is not so obvious, but if I now change the random value, you can see the stones immediately change their size on the y-axis. Another thing that I want to change is the seat of the point jitter, and it works the same way, just that I need to use another variable. I copy and paste the command for the first variable and use it to drive the second one. So now I want to be able to manipulate the size of each individual stone. And I can do that by creating an attribute wrangle after each transformation and create the point scale for each node. So I set the first one to point 8 and duplicate it for each instance. And now I can go ahead and say the first stone should be bigger. And the last thing I want to do is to randomize the additional cut. And to do this I create yet another stamp. And this time I want to randomize the position of this jittered sphere. So no stone is cut in the same position or not at all. So when I now change the random value, you should see that some stones are cut, but always in different positions, and some are not cut at all. 
So this concludes the creation process of the Druid Circle by using the new Boolean tools and a little bit of Vex. And the island starts to get in shape. In the next episode, I will create a small compound wall along a curve. And once again, I hope you found something useful here and are back next time. If you press this button, the internet gets deleted. Don't do it. Don't.